Hey guys, I'm coming with a Light Sworn Danger deck profile. Now this is can be either going second or going first, either or. This deck can kind of combo off depending on what hands you draw, depending on what you do. Uh, so uh, this is a very, very good and strong deck. Uh, it can also be really good during Master Roll 5 when uh, that format comes out. Uh, this is my Light Sworn um, Danger deck, so Master Roll 5 or not. On this card format, this deck can still function in different ways, in the same ways that it can in Master Rule 5, as that's what everybody's calling it. But this is very good of a deck, and let's just go ahead and get started. I do not play the Shadal engine in this deck. I will be making a Lightsworn Shadal deck. If you guys give me time on making that deck, I will uh, be more happy to upload that video as well. Lightsworn Shadals is really a really good combo combination deck. Except when you mill Shadal Monsters off of Charger Light Brigade, because this Charger Light Brigade is a cost, not an uh, effect that activates, so um, it won't be able to, you won't be able to get those Shadal Monsters. But either or, let's go ahead and get started in this video. I'm coming with the extra deck, side deck, and main deck, uh, what I currently play in this deck. Uh, it might change de depending on the variant of uh, the format and everything, and this deck might be 100% switched around depending on... Um, the rulings and everything that comes out during Master Rule 5, but let's just go ahead and get started. Um, for the monsters, uh, for my Light Sworn monsters, I do play Double Raid and Raid and Self Explanatory. It's pretty much, I like playing two as it is. Uh, Double Luminous, uh, Triple Wolf, and the one Felice or Felis, or you guys want to pronounce it. In my personal opinion, I think these are all the Light Sworn monsters you currently need in the deck. Um, Wolf is really, really self-explanatory, except drawing it is, can be a really bad thing. I'm trying to find a couple cards where uh, Wolf won't be as bad as it is, like Goblinburg or, uh, or other things of that nature, but uh, for now, I think Wolf is pretty good. It's self-explanatory at three. Uh, there's been times where I'll probably want to take out one, but it's pretty good. Double Lumina, self-explanatory. I do not play the Dark Lumina. I would love to incorporate that in the deck, but I don't think it will function in the same way as the re how I made the deck would be. Uh, Felis or Felice, however you want to pronounce it, it's pretty good too. It's basically another card you can get rid of something off the board. And Raiden self explanatory to me, always at two. Three can be kind of cloggy based on my variants of my decks. So, uh, yeah, that's it for the Light Sworns. Um, for the uh, Dangers, I play Triple Danger Mothman. Now, this is really, really good of a danger. Uh, I think it's very underrated. Everybody likes to play two or one. I think three is pretty good. Uh, dam double Danger Jackalow, it's self explanatory. It's at two for a reason. Uh, double Danger Snake, it's also self explanatory, and it's also at one, uh, two for a reason. Uh, one Danger Nessie, and then the one Danger Bigfoot. I love Bigfoot, in my personal opinion. It's a funny name, so that's why I love it. As well as the effect to basically get rid of something off the board. Uh, for monsters, I believe, so it's really, really good. Uh, Jackalow basically special summons from deck. Nessie basically adds from deck. Uh, Snake basically summons itself, if, even if either or. Uh, Mothman basically is another draw power card for the stack. So I think these dangers is something that's most ready to play in this deck. I uh, pretty much won't play the danger uh, bird or anything else, other danger monsters. I think these are self explanatory and these function very, very well in this build. I play for my little Chaos engine. I do play double Chaos Dragon Living Air and double Black Lotus Soldier on Void Beginnings. Uh, I'm not playing my Hollow Prince due to the fact I just found out something about the Hollow Prince and I had a Soul Room, sadly. But uh, I think Black Lotus Soldier on Void Beginning is underrated and I think it should be abused no matter what. It's really good of a card against certain decks and that's why. Uh, Depending on the master rule and different formats, this card could be very, very broken if it's used in the right position and the right time. And then Chaos Dragon Living Air, in my personal opinion, is one of the cards that definitely need to be banned no matter what. But in Konami's eyes, another perfect card to go off and sell as much as possible. So I think Chaos Dragon Living Air, uh, if I had three Chaos Dragon Living Airs, I would definitely play three and maybe boost up Black Lotus Soldier off when you begin to get three as well. But I sadly only own two, and I think it's pretty good and a very under a very abusive card. Uh, for the mini chaos, I do play the one Clap Serpent and the one Wither Buster. These are both self-explanatory. Uh, Banish a Dark, Banish a uh, Light. Uh, search each other out. Uh, sadly, they're a hit to one. If Kanavi was to bring this back to uh, two, just to see how it goes, I think that'd be a really awesome 
But uh, yeah, you stick a. Uh, these are just basically your mini chaos monsters, and I think they're pretty good. Basically, they're like Light Pulsar and Dark Flare, <laughs> my two favorite dragons in the game. But yeah. Uh, for extenders, you do play the one Armageddon Knight and the one Dark Griefer. Uh, for instance, the dangers. You can always discard your big dangers to go off and summon him, and then discard another dark to go off more combos. So the dangers are very more abusive just due to the fact that this guy. And then Armageddon Knight is pretty much self explanatory. You'll send um, this guy real quick. You'll send uh, Malicious. Armageddon Knight is basically your uh, Malicious way to get Malicious in the graveyard as fast as possible. So both of these are very. All, all five of these are both all self-explanatory. They basically help you out with your combo pieces. And also, if you drew Malicious and you draw a Dark Griefer, it's basically another same thing. So, yeah. Um, double Chaos Betrayer. Now, I like this card due to the fact it's another card to basically go off with your Chaos plays. Uh, it works perfect in the graveyard. It's there in your hand, so it basically is another card you could just send to the graveyard. And plus, it can get rid of those problematic cards you don't want to deal with in your opponent's graveyard. So, like, if they try to, um, activate a monster, or, like, activate a monster effect during your turn that activates in the graveyard, you can chain, uh, special summon this effect, banish that monster, so basically you get rid of that problematic card. So I think Chaos Betrayer is very, very underrated, and I think it's a very, very good card, especially for Synchro plays in this Master of 5. I think this card would be a very, very abusive and it's very, very strong in my personal opinion. Uh, and I love playing it at 2. I would probably put a third one in if I wanted it, but I think 2 is pretty good how it is. Um, I do play a small clown engine, so I do play the double damage juggler, double hat tricker, and then one trick clown. These are all self-explanatory as the clowns. I think uh, I play this in all my variants of my decks. I think these are all basically the ratio you should stick with if you want to put in a third damage juggler because you might not see it. Due to the fact that this deck is 60 cards, I see why. But other than that, I think 2-1 two, two, is perfect in this build. Uh, I've seen most people play uh, 2 Trick Clowns in pretty much a lot of decks. I don't think you should. Uh, damage Juggler basically counts as your Trick Clown. And Damage Juggler can also protect your life points. Or protect your, uh, like it basically protects your life, period, off a of Trick Clown, too. You can discard damage. Uh, chained in response to a Trick Clown, and you don't have to pay the life points. I didn't really see that coming until I read the effects and started doing more combos, and that actually works. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's another thing you can use in this deck, so I think this is pretty... Like, the Clown Engine is self-explanatory. I wouldn't really play no more than what they are. Uh, obviously, I play the one Wild Golem. Everybody should know what this card does. I played it in many, many of my decks, and I've taken it out of many of my decks, but I think this card is very underrated. And it can be very abusive for any mill deck or any card that sends stuff to the graveyard as fast as possible. I think this card is very good in Master Rule 5 as well. So that's why I like to incorporate it in this build as well. Then I I do play a bunch of level 1s. Throughout time of this deck, I've been taking out my level 1s and been trying out different other combos. Sadly, rest in peace, Brilliant Fusion. That was one of my favorite cards. Uh, so if you guys want to do... R.I.P. Brilliant Fusion in the comments below. I will love that. Uh, I'll always love the fact that you guys like to comment, subscribe, and like this video if you guys really love this deck. Uh, I do play the one Glow Up Bolts for my level 1s, the one Jet Seek Run, and the one Dot Scaper. I think these are really good and abusive level 1s. Um, especially when it comes to Crystal Nita Fiber coming out, I think these cards will be abused. And not really Dot Scaper, but Jet Seek Run and Glow Up Ball will be abused a lot in this deck. Uh, once I get my hands on Crystal Nita Fiber, I would love to play this in that in this deck as well because it can help me out with the synchro plays and combo off plays. Excuse me. So I think these cards are very abusive, and I think these cards are very underrated. And I think a lot of people should get their hands on a lot of these. Dotscaper is basically um, one of my favorite cards uh, throughout time. Um, I've played in a lot of my decks. Uh, a few of them that I haven't featured on the deck prof featured deck profiles on this channel. But I think Dotscaper is pretty good. Uh, it's one of the cards to basically help you pull combo off. Plus, there's another level 1 to search off for 1 for 1. So, yeah. Uh, I do play uh, Double Disturdo. And then the 1 Supreme King uh, Dark Worm. I think these cards are pretty uh, self-explanatory. And I think you should play them in your decks if you guys want to uh, see a uh, free level 4 or help you out with more extending synchro plays. I think these cards are very good, too. Uh, Spring King Dark Worm is basically like, uh, if it's sent off Charged Lurk Gate and you have no monsters on your board, 
uh, you can activate Supreme King Dark Worm's effect. I didn't actually understand that until uh, I read its effect and basically study a lot too. You can actually do that that way. So I think uh, Supreme King Dark Worm is pretty much underrated, and I think uh, I think you guys should play one in the deck. I wouldn't play two because sometimes you uh, it's good to see it in the deck. Uh, if you play two and you mill off both of them off the charge light brigade, they both will activate and they both will get summoned. So that would be also cool. But I, I think one's pretty much good in this build, in my personal opinion. Um, for the spell cards, I do play Triple Charge Light Brigade and Triple Solar Recharge. These are self explanatory. I do play a different, uh, I do play the same balanced Light Worm uh, amount in my deck, but I think um, I want to see uh, more draw power in the deck. Uh, the dangers do provide that draw power, as well as some of the Light Swarm monsters can go off of their mills and basically get you what you need in your graveyard too to get off of those draw powers, but I think you really want to use these to help out with your combos and everything like that. And then also I play Triple Allure because I do play a lot of darks in the deck, so uh, Allure can help out with that too. And it's basically another way to draw. It basically gives you more draw power in the build. Um, personal opinion, I think I want to run more cards more draw power cards but i think this is pretty much a good ratio and then uh for the only card that i played two of i played double dragon shrine because of supreme king dark worm and disturdo pretty much self-explanatory and then uh for my one arms i play the one rota because it reinforces the army you want to search the army grand knight a dark griefer or raiden so either or it's basically another good card uh one for one basically because all the level ones you play in the deck uh, Pot of Avarice because you're reducing a lot of monsters to the graveyard as fast as possible. So you want to abuse off those uh, monsters in the graveyard. Uh, one Foolish Burial basically it counts as uh, Spring King Dark Worm as well as anything else you really need in the graveyard. And then I do play the One Imperial Order because I do love this card a lot. And uh, I also still play the Nightmare Griffin as well in the deck. So I think that would be awesome. Another card to play. Um, for the other monster, or for the extra deck, I mean, for my extra deck, and then I'll go into the side deck. For my extra deck, I play the one Minerva for my rank force because it's self-explanatory. Uh, I think this is one of the best level force to play. Uh, if you guys want to play two, I would recommend you could probably take out uh, Fist Dweller or Dacuster Numeral. Either of these you could take out just to play another Minerva if you desperately want to summon Minerva a lot. Uh, Fist Dweller is self-explanatory because it's one of the best... Uh, Rank four is in the game. It's basically one of those monsters that basically says your opponent can't do shit. Your, excuse my language. Your opponent can't do anything in their graveyard. I didn't mean to say it. Sorry, guys. And the Dark Ghost Emerald is basically another card to um, help you recycle your resources. So, yeah. Uh, for the other monsters, for my Synchro Monsters, I do play a different uh, heavy lineup of Synchro Monsters in this build. Uh, uh, for my synchros, my only little synchro level five, I do play Nature Beast. Nature Beast is another way you can. It's basically another card you could summon and go for more combos. Uh, sadly, you only play one level one Earth monster to play in the deck, so that's another sad thing. But it's really abusive and really it's a good card against certain decks. So yeah, and against the Shadow and Volk um, matchup, it's really, really, really good against that deck. So yeah. I do play the one F.A. Don Draxter and the one Michael because they're really, really good underrated uh, level 7s to play. Michael is a different thing because I've started testing out my builds a little bit more with Michael. And I love the Ice Worm Michael due to the fact that it basically gets rid of a problematic card. So it's a card that basically gets rid of something that you can't deal with on the board. Plus it baits out in the gates too. So it's another thing I, I like to use it for. And then F.A. Don Drexler is basically another card that basically says I can negate any spell or trap you play against me. So it's like, evenly match, no chance. Uh, I'm not going to let you evenly match my board. So that's why I love F.A. Don Drexler. Uh, for my Synchro uh, 8, I'm working on trying to get my hands on a the Tengi uh, Synchro Monster, the level 8 Synchro Monster. Uh, I think it's a really good underrated synchro monster and I would pretty much play it in the extra deck if I had the room but uh, in my personal opinion I think these two are really underrated mated and basically the reason why I play a lot of the level 1 monsters that I do play um, like Jet Synchron and uh, Glow Ball they basically can help me get into Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon once you have uh, Michael on your board and Michael is like a dead card on your side of the board you can uh, 
synchro, uh, say you had glow up ball and chest synchro, and you haven't used either of those effects, you can use those effects to come out, uh, synchro with Michael to get off Crystal Wing and basically, uh, go off with from there. And Boiler Savage, Boiler Savage Dragon is best self explanatory. It's a really good synchro, uh, level 8 monster, and it basically allows you to go off for more combos. And it's basically another free negate on the board, so that's why I like to play it. Um, for my, uh, Link 2s, I do play a, a heavy lineup of Link monsters in the deck instead of a lot of the extra deck monsters. Like I said, when the Master Rule uh, 5 comes out, I'll be playing a lot more Synchro monsters than Links. But for now, I think these Links are really, really good and can help out with a lot of the shenanigans you could do against in this format. So let's go ahead and get started there. Uh, I do play the One Nightmare Phoenix. Phoenix is self-explanatory. Phoenix is basically another card to get rid of stuff off the board. And then the IP Masquerina because IP Masquerina is just abusive and it's self-explanatory. Uh, once you end up on the board with like these two, you have like F.A. Don Dragster and uh, Boiler Savage. You just basically link these two away and just go off for more combo. So I love these two love these two monsters no matter what. And I think these two guys are basically the best links to play in, the, in this format. Uh, you got the one Curious. Curious is self-explanatory. Uh, this card basically allows you to get wherever you need to the graveyard as fast as possible. Mainly you want to uh, send Imperial Order if it's not in the graveyard already. So you can get more combos to go off. And then I do play the one Black Ghost Soldier uh, Link Monster. I think this kite is very underrated. Uh, it's To me, it's a little bit overpriced than what it is. But it's really good of a Link Monster to go off if your combos are shenanigans. Um, you end up ending on a board where like you have Black Ghost Soldier on board beginning. Or Chaos Dragon Levin Air that are basically their effects are dead. Or you already used their effects that are in that turn. You could probably, uh, if you didn't kill your opponent for game, which is more likely you would. If you didn't get a chance to kill your opponent for game, you're probably linking them away to get off this. Or you can use IP Masquerina, your dead Chaos Dragon Levin Air for this, and just go off from there. I think it's just self-explanatory, and I think it's a really good Link monster to play in this deal. And a lot of decks can't out that, as well as out uh, Mechanite Crusader Echo Max uh, and Black Ghost Soldier Monster, or Black Ghost Soldier Link Monster, I think both of them. Uh, are monsters, link monsters that basically uh, your opponent can't out, and I think those cards would be very, very good in this deck because um, you do summon a lot of link monsters and a lot of extra deck monsters, so and when you do get your board spammed up, you need to clear out those monsters just to be able to get off with more combos. So I think F Mechanite Crusader, Echo Max, and Black Ghost Soldier and Link Monster are basically both the same. Because a lot of decks can't out those. Like the back row, like back row heavy decks, they can't really out this once you make them uh, link away with the IP Masquerade. They can't really out this. So yeah. And then for my last uh, two rank four or link fours, I do play Sayuja Skaldred and then one Bull Sword. These are both self explanatory. Sayuja Skaldred is at three, but I personally think one's good enough in the build. I would love to play more than one, but for now, I think one's good. And then Boiler Savage, Bull Sword, Dragon, as it is, is just another way to get off with OTK. Um, that's it for the uh, main deck and next deck uh, out to the side deck. I do play the Artifact Engine in the uh, side deck, so uh, one Scythe and three Artifact Sanctums. These are self-explanatory. Uh, sometimes you will end up going second in this build. When you know you're going second, I would always side deck these in when you know you're going second or if you choose to go second. Or, or I mean, go first. Sorry, guys. I'm used to going second. <laughs> uh, when you know you're going uh, first, you always want to side these in because they're very good against certain matchups and certain decks. Uh, if you're not going first, I wouldn't recommend the side deck these in. I would pretty much would recommend probably side deck in something uh, different. Uh, but for now, I, I love these cards, and I pretty much won't even take these out for anything. I think these are really abusive at the certain moments, and I think these cards can help out against certain matchups. So yeah. Um, for the other uh, spell, well, I don't play any other monsters in the deck. Uh, like DD Crows or Drone Lockfords, I would love to try to fit them in my extra deck. Or, or I mean fit them in my side deck, but I think the cards that I currently have in my side deck, because this deck has a mainly hard time against uh, Brackle Heavy decks. Uh, sadly, I am using my Evely matches in another deck right now, so I pretty much cannot able to swap them out uh, for this video, but I think Triple Dark Roller No Morris is really good in this deck. Uh, it basically uh, basically allows you to get rid of your problematic cards on the board. So say if your opponent has like a decent board that basically negates everything, you can play Dark Roller No More and negate everything and you can go off your combo. So I think this is Dark Roller No More is a pretty good card against that. Uh, like in all my videos, I'm going to start playing 
two Twin Twisters and more of Triple Cosmic Cyclones because Cosmic Cyclone is really good. Uh, mainly against Mystic Mind. I do not like Mystic Mind. And when I'm seeing Mystic Mind or seeing a lot of back row decks, I will pretty much um, always put these in more than Twin Twisters. Uh, also, in this deck, uh, discarding those dangers doesn't really hurt me that much, but I think uh, I want those cards in my hands at certain certain times. Sorry, guys. There's just a little dirt on my card. But, yeah, in my personal opinion, I think these are really the, uh, good spell cards to play in this deck, and I think these cards, uh, I'm pretty much going to continue playing them how they are. You guys can always change up based on what you guys like and based on what you guys can figure out. I also do play the only trap... Besides artifact uh, sanctums, the red reboot. Uh, Marco's opinion, I will pretty much will end up taking this out completely. Uh, sometimes it's really good, sometimes it, does, it isn't. I don't like the fact that I'm giving you a trap card to use, to abuse, but I think this card is very good. Uh, it basically allows you to go for more combos and it'll basically protect yourself. Uh, but if you use both of this and Bistro during the same turn, you're basically about to end up killing yourself unless you can kill your opponent for OTK. But. I, I like it as it is. And then uh, for my only two extra deck monsters, I side deck. I do side deck the Gaga Cowboy just for game. Yeah, this is just self explanatory. I just, I won game. So that's pretty much self explanatory. And then I do side deck the Zaborg. Uh, Tabo Logic Zaborg. Uh, the reason I side deck this in because against a lot of certain decks, getting rid of all those cards on the board. Plus, this deck does banish a lot in the main deck. So, uh, having Saborg on your side of the board, basically you can make it into a beefy attack monster. And uh, once you banish everything on the board, and he comes right back, there you go. You basically kill you basically kill your opponent for game. It's basically a, um, a Regeki. Or it's like a lightning storm, but it banishes everything instead of sending it to the graveyard. So basically it gets rid of everything you don't want to deal with. So yeah. Overall, this deck is pretty much really good, in my personal opinion. Uh, especially when Master Roll 5, this deck can very, very, very be abusive. Um, there will be changes based on uh, certain formats and based on what I can get my hands on and based on what other ideas I can keep, figure out. But I figured I'll come with you guys with this deck. Uh, like I said, this is a, this could be based on uh, this format and Master Roll 5, if you guys really want to suggest i will be as soon as master Roll 5 comes out i'll probably be switching out a lot of the extra deck more than the main deck uh side deck might be completely switched based on the current format as well but in my personal opinion i think this deck is really good and it can be competitive based on what you're going against in certain formats you might want to switch out uh your side deck based on what you're going against and based on what you know you're going to be in up going against uh but overall this deck is really good and i like it based on how it is uh, you guys let me know down in the comments below if you guys really want to see a Lights Weren't Shadal 60 card Lights Weren't Shadal deck profile. And with a splash of dangers, maybe. <laughs> uh, you guys let me know down in the comments below if you guys really, really want to see that. Uh, like this video if you guys want to see that no matter what. Uh, I will also be uploading the deck list with this deck profile, so I hope you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, previously, I'm not able to do a lot of uh, deck lists for a lot of people but uh uh this time i am able to so you guys let me know in the comments below if you guys really want to see that also uh check out my shadal in bulk deck uh it's really good in this format and plus my variant is more pure shadals than anything but you guys let me know down in the comments below if you guys want to uh see more videos like this uh don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and like always dragon rockstar is signing out peace